There he is, folks. He's traveled a thousand miles in the center of the South Pacific Gyre. We're looking for classic, elusive classic bag monster. I think we have him. My name is Andy Keller and I am the president of the Chico Bag Company. I created uh, a bag that's designed to fit in your pocket so that uh, basically to help Americans use reusable bags instead of single-use bags. We're picking out marine debris out of the gyre, the South Pacific uh, subtropical gyre. And uh, we pulled out a crate and a barrel. Basically, the crew consisted of 13 people, a variety of people from scientists, marine biologists, to journalists, to musicians, you know, to just people interested in the topic. You know, so I was there, you know, as a reasonable bag maker. My whole mission is to help people adopt a reasonable bag habit. And I was just one of the players there. We we're all really fascinated and interested with the impacts of plastic in our environment. And uh, we didn't know exactly what we'd see out there. I mean, some people had a better idea than others. Myself, you know, people described the gyres as island, you know, the soup. I didn't really know what I'd see. And when I went out there, it was a very interesting. What, at the very surface, seemed I guess the way to say it is, you know, at first glance, it was a very beautiful, pristine ocean. But it wasn't until you started really looking at it and analyzing it that you saw that it actually is a plastic soup. And it's filled with plastic. And it's just trying to d describe the expanse of the ocean. It's like s over 70% of the world is ocean. So to try and like even comprehend the size of that and what, you know, you pull this, this trawl through the water and it you know, picks up maybe a tablespoon of plastic over a two mile period. But then it's only two feet wide, and so when you extrapolate that two feet out to the horizon, which is roughly 12 miles, it's a lot of plastic. You know? And then you think beyond the horizon, you know, there's just miles and miles and miles of wilderness, and if you're picking up that much plastic in just a small sample, it, it, when you extrapolate it out, it just, there's a ton of plastic out there. And when I got to Easter Island, that's where I saw it all washing up. So Easter Island acts as a net, and um, all the plastic that washes up on Easter Island is from the gyre, um, or you know from Easter Island as well. But a lot of it you can tell is from other countries, and so you know all the countries that surround the South Pacific, you know like Chile, Argentina, you know New Zealand, Australia, you know over into the Pacific Rim, Southern uh, Asia, all that plastic kind of converges into. Um, one of two gyres in the South Pacific. And being out in the gyre was a life, I guess once in a lifetime experience. And what I realized out there is that, I mean I learned this in school but I never really thought about it, is like 70-something like percent of the world is covered in water. Like we live on a water planet and how, like it's not a dumping ground, you know, and I know people don't intentionally dump things in there, but plastics end up in the ocean, like I, I've seen it firsthand, and what I saw, a lot of it, were single-use plastics. And the only way to really tackle the problem is to stop it at the source. Stop single-use products from entering our waste stream. And the easiest way to do that is to significantly reduce, reduce the number of plastics you use, and the second one obviously is reuse. And then if both of those fail, recycle. You know, but it has to be in that order. It's reduce, significantly reduce, then reuse, and then if all else fails, recycle.